Pentecost Sunday. I invite you to find elements for communion and a Bible to have there in your home as we worship together. I remind you as the music begins in a moment to please take a moment to share on Facebook and to add a comment of your own that others may know they are invited and welcome to worship the Lord alongside us. If you would like a worship guide, there is one available at our church website, www.firstchristianarlington.org. There you will find This Week at FCC, and under that tab, the worship guide. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning with the spirit of unity as we enjoy and prepare with the music that Paul will share with us. We will begin to worship at 10 a.m.
Good morning, friends. We're glad that you're with us this morning. We are First Christian Church, where we find ourselves gathered together, centered in Christ, and formed in relationships. We hope that you will uh, prepare yourselves, if you have not already prepared, for, for participating in a couple of parts of our worship, for communion, if you can gather some, something to take to represent the bread and the cup, uh, crackers and juice, or bread and water, that would be wonderful. You might want to have a candle or a light or a Bible uh, to help you feel that your place is a place of worship right now. We also have a uh, worship guide that you can follow that's a printed or a document that is you can print out or you can look at your on your device uh, to follow along on the worship service and that is at our website under this week at FCC. You can find the Sunday worship guide. Let's join now in preparing our spirits to worship God. Sing with us. Please join me in today's responsive prayer. Spirit of God, we have gathered together to pray and to make ourselves ready for your coming. 
Give us faith, Lord, that when you come like the wind, though we do not see you, yet we may hear what you are saying to us and discern your movement. Give us courage, Lord, that we may not fear the tongues of flame. Let all that is unworthy, impure, and sinful be burned from our lives. May we know that it is love that burns so brightly and love that strips away our sin. Give us an open mind, Lord, that the truth you bring may make its home with us, truth to set us free, truth to guide us and inform us, truth to lead us in the way of your will. Give us an open heart, Lord, that we may seek all people for your realm and set no limits to the proclaiming of your word. Holy Spirit, with the whole church, we wait for you in every place and in every generation. Come wind, come fire, come truth, come love. In Jesus' name, amen. Join us in singing our opening hymn, O Worship the King. together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of wind divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each one of them
All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. He's a caring man. God is love. God loves us. God is the light of the world. He protects us. Um, God is, um, is really important because he created us. God is important because um, if we hadn't had him, none of us would be alive. He is love. God made us and He's very helpful in our lives, and he, he's going to guide us through, through our lives till we end up in heaven. Oh, children, that was such a beautiful gift you just gave our church. Thank you and Mrs. Amy for the hours that took to put together. I realized that some pretty strange things have been happening around you these past days, and you're probably seeing things on the news that you've never seen before, and you may have a lot of questions that you're invited to bring with your parents to any of your pastors at any time. But this morning, I also want to invite you to take time to celebrate. Now, what do we have to celebrate? Well, well for one thing, you. Your church is so proud of each one of you. I just have to take an extra minute to brag on these children. For two months, I've discovered you have not only graduated to the next grade, but I've learned that you have been using free time to read chapter books, bike rides, shoot baskets, play in your backyards, visit grandparents, play with your animals, practice piano, learn new things like how to crochet or make fruit salad, produce beautiful creative crafts, get on Zoom with your church buddies, respond to many of our kids' service projects we've put together, and your church is so thankful and proud of how you're living and loving during these strange days. Well, what else do we have as a church to celebrate besides you? Well, for nine years, as long as some of you have been alive, our church has been known in town for helping people have healthy, fresh food to eat. So we were selected recently to be one of the churches to receive free boxes of food to give out. And yesterday morning, your church loaded 124 boxes into cars lined up all around our parking lot. And then in the afternoon, 10 cars of our church members formed a parade to our three seniors' homes to celebrate their graduation from high school. Keep reading all summer long, kids, and one day you'll be like Alex, Daniel, and Kat graduating high school one day. Now, right as we were heading home from congratulating our church's seniors, our nation celebrated news of a successful space launch, the first one, again, in nine years. Here's a picture of the astronauts with their toy dinosaur they took with them into space. This is all wonderful, amazing news, lifting our spirit. All these accomplishments make me feel like having an online party. You know, you've inspired Pastor Don and me to keep our brains sharp while in quarantine. So instead of throwing this big book we had out that had just been moving from one place to another, full of 750 crossword puzzles, we had an idea. What if we opened the book and actually tried some of the puzzles before we just sit down and watch TV for hours? So that's what we've been trying to do. And I couldn't find the right one for us for a party game today, but I tried making one up for us, and then maybe you can make one up for us next. You remember last week in the book of Acts, we talked about the amazing action of Jesus being lifted up or ascending into heaven. Do you remember what we called that? Were you thinking of the word ascension? Ascension means the act of rising higher. Let's put ascension here, going across. 
Now, before his ascension, Jesus promised the disciples he would not leave them all alone, but would send something very special to help them on earth, and that they should wait for it right where they were in Jerusalem. Well, guess what? Today is that special day, the birthday, we call it, of the church. Can you believe today makes 50 days since Easter? In the Greek language, the word for things based on the number five is pronounced pent. Like we know a pentagon shape or the building has five sides, or the Pentateuch is the first five books of the Bible. Do you know what today is called? Were you thinking of the word Pentecost, which is the 50th day after Jesus' resurrection on Easter? It was a festival day that brought people into Jerusalem from all lands. So it was a great day for the Holy Spirit to come show the apostles they could make a difference in all the world, just like you can. Let's put in Pentecost to answer our clue going down. Now think ahead. Can you guess what shape our crossword puzzle makes when we put these two words together? It's the cross! Neither Jesus' ascension nor Pentecost could have happened without Jesus going through the really hard time of the cross. Now, he could have chosen to turn away from it, but he chose to go through it so he could show us he stays with us through the hard times and on into the celebration times. So, what happened on this special day we call the birthday of the church? Well, first, it says here in Acts chapter 2 that suddenly a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind. This is the best I can do. Then there appeared to them tongues of fire resting on each one of them. Ooh, that kind of sounds like we have party hats. All right. Oh, but what about party favors? Don't you love party favors at a party? Huh. Well, there has never, ever been a party favor this awesome in all of history that came, then came down that day of Pentecost. It's a gift that lasts for all time. Just look what it says Jesus gave the apostles that day in Acts chapter 2, little verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. This party gift gave Jesus' followers the power to do the most amazing things. And it's the same power we share among us today. It's the power within us that guides us all our days. It's that voice inside that says, go this way, not that way. Try this, not that. Serve others more. Serve yourself less. You can make it through hard times. I am with you forever. Now that is something really worth celebrating. Don't you think? Let's pray and thank God for Pentecost. Dear Lord, you thank you for never turning back from the cross, even though you could have, for ascending to heaven to watch over us, but also sending us the Holy Spirit to guide us all our days here on earth. It seems you never tire of giving us good gifts. Thanks for giving us a happy birthday today. Help us to make good use of our precious gifts. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Carol. And thank you to our children of our congregation for acting out those moments of Pentecost on the, on the Zoom videos. That was fabulous, wonderful. Let's, uh, we've heard the story. We've heard some of the details. Uh, let's hear the whole flow of the scripture, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21, where Luke writes, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound of the crowd, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. I learned if you go through really fast, no one can correct your pronunciation. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. and Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. as I've studied and prayed over this passage over this past week, I've realized that I've been carrying presumptions about this scripture. It's like I'm suddenly seeing things that have been there all along. Do you have any long-standing presumptions of what you think is in the Bible? Things like, I don't know, God helps those who help themselves. Not in there. God won't give you more than you can handle. Nope. God needed another angel. That's a nice sentiment, but no, it's not biblical. Money is the root of all evil. Nope. Not in the Bible. Now there's a verse that says, the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, I want to share a few of my presumptions about Pentecost that came to light this week and also relate them to presumptions that need to come to light for all of us after this week. In Acts 2, Jesus' disciples are waiting and praying together in the upper room in Jerusalem during the annual Jewish feast of Pentecost. Suddenly there comes from heaven the sound of a rushing wind and an appearance like tongues of flame over the disciples' heads. Then all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. I've always presumed that the Holy Spirit empowered those disciples to speak in other languages so that they could speak about Jesus to a a multinational crowd of pilgrims who had come to Jerusalem from many nations for the Feast of Pentecost. You see, that was the perfect crossroads. Jesus' disciples, men and women, had been praying together for several weeks. They'd been obeying Jesus' strange command for them to 
wait. And Jerusalem was packed, not only with its own citizens, who themselves had come from many nations to live there, but packed also with pilgrims from throughout the known world, who were all here together for the Feast of Pentecost. All that was needed was for the empowering of the Holy Spirit to come upon those praying and waiting disciples. Which leads to another presumption. My presumption that Peter stepped up and stepped out to preach a unifying sermon to all the peoples from all over the world. But in verse 14, Peter specifically addresses men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. That's a more limited audience, already mentioned up in verse 5. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So Peter presumes a specific audience for this message that he suddenly feels compelled to share. In those words, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, I hear something like, this message must only be for People like me. Which brings me to the crossroads that I'm struggling with this morning. Some other presumptions that I've had to face this week. Realizing that every day I speak and, and think and live my life toward and within a limited, restricted subset of humanity. Since the murder of George Lloyd last Monday, I have read so many impassioned responses on Facebook. Now we see so many impassioned responses around our country. One response I read just a couple days ago was written by a woman who happened to be a teenager in youth group when I was a youth minister 35 years ago. She's now a military officer with a family of her own. Her name is Sarah Pasteur. And Sarah gave me permission to share her, her words. She writes, every white person born in the United States receives as a birthright an instant and obligatory infusion of racism. We all have received it. It is the gift of being an American, inescapable because of our history and the cultural legacy left behind. I have it. My parents have it. My children have it. We all have it. It clouds our judgment, impairs our reasoning, and motivates our behavior, whether we know it or not. Self-awareness helps, but it is not enough and people of color are dying because of it. They are dying because they are being murdered, like George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and so many others. And they are dying because they are treated differently by our justice system, our health care system, 
our educational system, our financial industry, and every aspect of American society. There are bad people in the world. There are bad doctors, bad lawyers, bad cashiers, bad repairmen, bad teachers, bad priests, and bad cops. We have all experienced those people, I get that. But the bigger issue is that people of color are treated differently because they are not white. Because they are not white. And it is just not good enough for white people to say to themselves, that's wrong, and stop there. White people need to take action. Say something. Do something. Actively contribute to changing things. We cannot keep saying that's wrong and then look away. Sarah, you are right. I am a racist. I live a racist life. I don't want to be. I don't try to be, but I am a white American. And it's just there. I don't have to try. Trying to look past presumptions, it appears that Peter was also born into prejudice and even racism. When he came out from the upper room ready to tell about Jesus, he was aiming his message to his people, men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. But the point of Pentecost is that now the Holy Spirit is taking control. The Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus' disciples just as Jesus had promised it would. And then look what happens. Peter begins quoting the prophet Joel when suddenly it's like the Holy Spirit breaks through Peter's presumptions pointing now to Christ's vision of the kingdom of God. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Even upon my slaves, men and women, I will pour out my Spirit and they shall prophesy. There will come signs of change, blood and fire and smoky mist. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today, today I see Peter's presumptions being pushed aside in the very moments that the Holy Spirit is coming upon him and filling him and using him to prophesy. The Holy Spirit pushing Peter beyond his own presumptions and prejudices, even beyond his inherited way of hearing Scripture. I think Peter is hearing it even as it is moving through his lips. I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
even upon my slaves, my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did that do it for Peter? Did one spirit-filled experience cleanse him completely of the uh, the racism and nationalism that was in his DNA? Well, apparently not. Keep reading the book of Acts, and you'll find the Holy Spirit continuing to work on Peter, even while working through Peter. Thanks be to God. Like when Peter is praying up on a rooftop, And God lowers down a sheet filled with unclean animals and says, Peter, arise, kill, and eat. No, Lord, nothing unclean has ever touched my lips. Three times. It takes three times with Peter, you notice? This happens. Peter. You know what our Lord is doing through the Holy Spirit. You know that distinctions like clean and unclean won't stand anymore. Not in the realm of God. Those presumptions have to go. Oh, and by the way, the Gentile Cornelius is downstairs at your door and You need to go tell his family about Jesus. The Holy Spirit had to keep on working on Peter, and I know the Spirit needs to keep on working on me. I shall pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and they shall prophesy. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When will that day come? That day when everyone who calls on the Lord shall be saved. When will that day become? Because last Monday was not that day. George Floyd was not saved. He was murdered. Until that day comes, I know that I need the Holy Spirit to teach me deep lessons about my own presumptions. I need people around me to help me hear what the Spirit is saying. I know that you do too. Oh, how we need another Pentecost. Oh, Lord Jesus, living Christ, send your spirit anew today to remind us of all that you taught us. Speak your words deep into our hearts. And Lord, on this Pentecost day, remind all white American Christians of what may have been the most important miracle of all on that Pentecost day. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak.
We come to a time to unite our hearts in prayer. It behooves us to follow Jesus' instruction, to pray and wait and receive the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And by that power and only that power will we be changed. We pray together today for those in this congregation who need the healing touch of God's hand. We pray for those who have been through surgeries, those awaiting procedures, in the hospital, home from the hospital, caring and staying beside those in the process of healing. We lift you to God. God's healing spirit, the peace of Christ that passes all understanding to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus in these days of waiting. As we pray today, it has been a week when we have reached the landmark of over 100,000 deaths in America due to COVID-19 and so many more around the world. And so as we worship, we offer lament Sadness in our hearts over the loss of so many. Our prayer that this time may end. And we be free. We come this week after George Floyd was killed last Monday by a uniformed peace officer in Minneapolis. The next in a long, too long line of names representing lives taken unjustly. We pray. Let us pray. Oh God who made the heavens and the earth, who separated land from water and then filled both with amazing creatures, a vast world of beauty, color, design, swimming, walking, climbing, flying, building, learning, reflecting your image. Today we come reflecting your image and asking God that we might see the beauty you see in your world through our eyes that have seen so much. May we see the presumptions we live with that Cover over our hearts. May we be filled by you, Holy Spirit, in the way you will come and renew and empower and unite, heal and restore and make one. One. That we may be one, O oh Jesus, as you and the Father are one. May we be one. In the midst of this week, when so much lowers our eyes to the ground, God, we do lift up our eyes to the heavens. That SpaceX capsule lifted off safely yesterday has docked with the space station. Oh God, I ask you to help us who claim to follow you to see your world as they see it today from that space station, or, or better yet, God, as the Apollo astronauts of the 60s saw the earth from the moon. Help us to see this earth you have created as you see it, 
O God who made this earth and all who live upon it, who sees this world as one, as beautiful, as united in dependence upon you and one another as we make this journey together, all of us together, each of us in your image. You've got the whole world in your hands, O oh God. Help us to love one another as you have loved us, O oh Christ. We offer our lives, our prayers, our hearts, our prejudices, our racism, our desire from you to rise up and be more. In Christ's name, amen. God kept his promise to give the apostles the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday, but it took a while. They prayed for 40 days. They might have wondered if it was really going to happen. And Jesus had left and waiting is hard. Uh, God's promises are often slow in coming to us as well, but we need to trust that uh, the timing is always right. And right now, we are all praying about COVID-19 and asking God to end this terrible epidemic and loss of life, suffering, economic hardship, isolation, and stress. Um, originally, I was hoping we could get back to church uh, by Easter. And then, you know, that was set back. And I thought, well, maybe Mother's Day. And right now, I'm wondering if it might be the fall. Um, so we need to be patient. We need to keep praying and praying. And God always hears our prayers and answers at just the right time. So we mustn't lose heart or give up. Um, God has time to shape us and mold us into his image and prepare the way for new opportunities. Right now, I've thought about things, you know, how the church is learning to do new things, new technologies. And it's also taught us, I know in me in particular, to not take things I previously took for granted, um, to appreciate the hard work of so many people, to hear the cry of the poor and speak for justice, to pay attention to the environment, to listen to the hearts of people we've been previously too busy to engage. So we do need to keep praying. And what I've learned through this whole experience is something uh, my dad would always tell me, carpe diem, seize the day, make the most of each moment, and enjoy each day, and count your blessings. Join with me in prayer. Mighty God, during this time of uncertainty, we ask you to guide us and show us the light through your Holy Spirit. Shine the light on us so a new church may be born in us. Help us to serve as your ambassadors and spread your word of forgiveness acceptance, and life-changing love. Give us strength and renewal through your presence. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Prepare your hearts as we prepare our hearts for communion with our Lord. Sing with us, one bread, one body. Perhaps one of the greatest temptations of our age is to feel that we must have every answer, to feel that we must immediately have the right words, that we must quickly form our positions and begin to shore them up because to pause, to examine, to flounder for words is vulnerability. But when we approach this table, when we come around and pull up a chair and break bread with one another, what stops it from being routine, empty practice, and turns it into an act of discipleship is when we let where we are in our lives intersect and pierce our soul. And so we come around this table and we say, words fail us. And when words fail us, we have a starting place. To admit that, to admit that words do not do justice, for that all is around us, and we can listen. For one of the greatest miracles that Pentecost Day, some 2,000 years ago, is that they listened, they heard each other, and they understood each other in the language of their heart. They heard each other. As we, disciples, gather around this table each week, we pull up chairs to listen to each other and remember a Jesus, God's own self, who chose to walk among us, to hear firsthand, to experience, and to not be distant, to not shout just from the mountaintop, but to sit around table even the very night he was going to be betrayed, and to listen to the disciples' worries and fears and concerns, and to share with them and to break bread with them and to pray for them. And after the meal was cleared away, he took the bread, he raised it, he asked God's blessings on it, and he broke it, saying, this is my body, broken for you. In the same way, he lifted that nut sacred cup of that meal. He asked God's blessings, and he shared it with them, saying, this, this is the cup of the new covenant in me, of hope and forgiveness and love. Let us turn our hearts to prayer. 
Heavenly Father, as we come around your virtual t table today, even though we are separated by space, let us know that we are one in the body of Christ. Lord, today we are a nation and a family hurting because of acts of violence around our country. As we partake of your Holy Communion today, and as we eat this bread, let us all be reminded that we are all one in the body of Christ. In your heavenly and precious name we pray. Amen. We can go. Oh God, giver of every good and perfect gift, thank you for this cup. May it quench the thirst for your spirit in each of us. As we reflect on Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, may we find renewed strength that only you can give us. Bless us as we seek your guidance for the living of each day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And so once again, we confess, this table is not ours, but the Lord, and the Lord's invitation that gathers us around it. Thanks be to God. The Holy Spirit is moving, as the Spirit always has. God draws us nearer, and Jesus calls us. I invite you where you worship. If you're able, rise in body or in spirit, as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to respond this morning. As the Spirit moves in our midst and renews our lives, may we respond in faith and hope. May we find our heart, may we find our words, may we find those around us with whom we may join heart and soul and live and work for a world of justice and hope and love. May you follow Christ today in the footsteps that he sets before you. May we be bound together in God's love. Let's sing.
We're glad you joined us today for worship. We hope that your hearts have been touched and that your spirit has been filled. We do have some announcements this week. We have, again, the office is closed. Uh, the office is open, but uh, not for visitors. We hope that you can get in touch with us by phone or email or text. And we also have our Tuesday night Bible study. Wednesday night Bible study is over now for a while. We will start another group up a little later. But choir practice is back on virtually through Zoom. So if you would like to join us for choir practice, uh, choir rehearsal Wednesday evening is at 7.30. You can get in touch with me or a look at The Friend, which will have the information in our newsletter, The Friend. We do still have our children meeting on Thursdays at 3.30. We hope that your children will be a part of that. Are there any other announcements that we have for this morning? I don't believe so. Join us again next week and bring a friend or family member with you. Children of God, you are named, you are known by your creator, the one who made every star in the sky, the one who loves you dearly, knows your name and watches over you. Let us leave this place as a people moving with the spirit, woven together, called by Christ, called to disciple ourselves after God's son. Leave in peace. Thank you.